Hey guys, it's Bossom back with Bossom Racing and obviously day one has finished at Aintree with the Grand National. Um, so yeah, we've had a couple of winners, uh, a place, we've been unlucky with a few horses as well. A bit disappointing with Zana here in Guard Your Dreams and you know, a horse that's got hampered by one of our horses as well. So that is racing for you. Just a bit unlucky. Brazil miles beat i think the ground definitely had a bit of a play to the reason why he didn't live up to the boodles hype interesting to see knight salute um getting the stewards and crying and actually overturning his, his dead heat into a actual win we tipped him up here at, at the Cheltenham festival and the triumph he ran like he ran like very very poorly um yeah really disappointing at Cheltenham. so i decided not to go and tip him up Four a tree with that disappointing run. I think I finished about 16, 17 lengths between him and Pied Piper. He's managed to overturn that and eventually win. Bit of an interesting steward inquiry as well. Not too sure um, what you guys are opinions on that. I mean, David Russell did go a bit early with Pied Piper, but that was interference. And I guess stewards are looking at how both those horses finished in the end and Knight Salute looks like the horse that finished well in the end in that race, um, obviously being impeded as well. So you might have to overturn that if it's a head. It's the difference of, it's the difference between the two is like a, a head or a, you know, half a length and maybe it wouldn't get on own turns. But because it was a dead heat, I think they had to in a sense that because there was interference, even if it was small, that margin probably would have made a difference because it was a dead heat. So yeah, very inter interesting and controversial sort of take Milton Harris, even though he did became the, the winning grade one winner in that race, was, wasn't too happy about it. But a lot of, of drama, certainly in that first um, first day today as well. Nice bumper win in the end with Mullins. Got hacked in a lot of money and a lot of support for that horse. So one to keep an eye. The form between... Um, Pink in the Park definitely worked out very, very nicely. A bit unlucky with Time White again, falling. And yeah, beyond uh, before midnight, I should say, just didn't have the the pace or just didn't stay on well. Um, a bit unlucky with that one as well. So yeah, let's just move on to day two. Um, some, hopefully you can get some more like nice places like La Bruyle. Um, but yeah, let's just go just crack into it. Um, it's a trickier day as well, I will have to say. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just crack into it. So Cobbler's Dream is the first selection in the first race in the handicap. Um, finished second, um, I think, in the Kim Muir um, at Cheltenham. Let me just triple track that. It wasn't the Kim Muir, it was the Martin Pipe. So my apologies. But yeah, so he finished second in the, Kim, uh, in the Martin Pipe and it's not really like done anything wrong a um, bit of a drift here so it's come from fives out to 15 to 2 you know 7 to 1 in places and i'm not too sure why jack andrews is going to be on board he's going to he's going to claim five pounds he's going to be on a mark of a decent mark of 135 and i think that that mark's pretty good considering what he's done his profile is brilliant he's going to like it around entry he jumps for fun and yeah i mean if you just look for his form and you look for everybody else's form, then it, it's pretty good reading. Langadana won't be having. We got very unlucky again um, when we backed him at Cheltenham after getting brought down in the second jump. I just can't find myself wanting to back Langadan. It's too short for me. Maybe if there's a drift during the day, maybe I'll be all over Langadan. Um, but yeah, it just I don't want to get... I don't want to get, you know, joked again because we just, the amount of times we've been brought down by, you know, loose horses or horses that have impeded our run, it's just too many. So, yeah, I won't be touching Langadan. It's too short for me in this sort of race. I do think he's the best horse in, in, in the race, but there's no value in that sense. Cobbler's Stream at 15 to 2 is probably the best horse bar Langadan, if you look through the form. Speech Bubble's another one to mention as well. But Cobbler's Dream at 15 to 2 is better value than Langadan at 11 to 4, 100%. And there's another one as well I'd like to speak about as well. Um, Connor Ord's on board this one, taking three pounds as well. Um, it's called Politess at 14 to 1. Um, some nice form definitely over at Punchdown and Cork. Didn't really like the ground over in Heavy. 
so he's suited with a soft ground. Um, obviously, rain's fallen yesterday overnight, and we'll probably we'll see the ground firm up a little bit during out during the day. But obviously, this is the first race. I expect um, the ground still to be soft, and Politess likes a soft ground. Um, there's form in a Grade One as well um, with Politess finishing quite far away from Stormy Island, but you know, again, Politess wasn't meant to run that race. This, this is a Grade Three. Massive down, set down in, you know, class and ability. So, you know, it's off, off a workable mark of 129. If you take on, into account the uh, the claiming from the jockey, jockey's decent over in Ireland as well. Got decent strike rate. So six places on offer here. Um, at 14 to 1, Politess is the second selection. Cobble Dream, I don't know if I'll back each way or not. I'll probably back just straight win, um, knowing what happened with Miller's Bank today. Um, so yeah, I think Politest each way at 14s and Cobbler's Dream at 15 to 2 to straight win will be the two I will go with in the first. Moving on to the second, and there's just two horses in here, both of them to straight win. You get your money back pretty much if John Bond wins, and you get a bit of profit if first street wins. Two of the Nicky horses that I like here, um, John Bond again ran in the in the Supreme, got absolutely battered by Constitution Hill. Um, looking to go over chasing next uh, this season, and in a very weaker race, um, obviously, was by far the better, um, or by far the better horse if you take Constitution Hill out of the Supreme. However, it was beaten by a good twenty lengths. So again, you've got to sort of work out where that form lies. Um, again, so first street in in, a, in that sense is a bit of value. Um, again, he's. He's run behind, you know, Glory and Fortune. He's run well. He ran in the, um, he ran in the County Hurdle, I think, um, behind State Man. Um, yeah, County Hurdle. Obviously, the mark of one four seven is a bit interesting. Obviously, workable, well handicapped, finishing only a length behind State Man, which is obviously a well handicapped horse. So there's obviously their improvement there. Um, obviously, Nico takes the board on this mount. Um, obviously, Adam's going to stick on John Bond just because of that supreme run. But yeah, so if we just have two win bets here, um, John Bond to win, and we'll play, let's just place a, a two-point play on this one, and we place two points on First Street. First Street, we make profit, and John Bond makes our money back. So that's the angle I'm really looking at. Um, I'm not too sure if I'll put more on John Bond on the day, just because I want to see what the market's like. Obviously, there was a bit of a drift from the start, but we didn't know if, John Bond was going to be declared or not, and Connections didn't know either. So yeah, John Bond um, should win this race. It's obviously got the best form out there, but again, value is where I look at it and that sort of angle. And John Bond at evens probably isn't the angle um, or value angle in this race. So yeah, those are the two I like. And we'll move quickly on to the next because I don't want to take too much time. This is going to be a 1v1 between two horses. The rain's going to obviously help Lahon press here. And this has been on my mind constantly a bit between who's going to win this race. Obviously, I expected Braceman game to run at Cheltenham um, and go against Lahon Press and the Brown Advisory. And that just didn't happen. Um, obviously, um, Paul Nickers will thought there's got to be a reason why the rain's going to have a bit of big adverse effect before. So clearly, there must have been a reason why Braceman game's been pulled out of that. Um, so he's going to come off very fresh. Lahon Press, obviously, storming in that... Um, and that brown advisory really was uh, an eye catcher. Really was breathtaking to see how impressive the home press was on that day. Um, but my thing with Braceman game is how he jumps. He does get really, really tight into those uh, fences, and that's going to be a problem around the entry. Uh, obviously, the fences are a bit more different, and um, I just don't. As much as I want to back Braceman game, obviously I tipped him up at Cheltenham, but I didn't know how impressive the home press was. This is going to be a small stakes race for sure. Uh, Lahon Press, I probably will tend to fancy over the Braceman game. Um, it's just it's just the way Braceman game jumps. It's really the one that makes you want to think this could this force could fall. Um, and we've been joked by a lot of fallers, so I'd li rather tip up a horse that I know jumps well, has been in impressive form over Cheltenham, and it's going to come off here hot. And it's going to run a blinder. So the tip here, small stakes only. Um, it's going to be with Lahon Press. He's going to like the ground. And fingers crossed for a good run here. 
so yes. Moving on to the feature race of the day, the 3.30, which is the Marsh Chase. Two horses again I like here. Uh, Fenabile Civila, again, ran pretty impressively in Cheltenham, uh, finishing second in the Queen Mother. Uh, Venetia Williams has been in fine form recently. The yard's been flying. Charlie Deutsch is obviously booked, the leading jockey for the yard. Fenabile Civila, again, at 7-1 to one each way. Bit of a bit of a drifter as well recently. Can't see why. This can't win. Definitely has got a major, major, major chance if it's anywhere near that previous run. Obviously, Shishkin not running well in that Queen Mother. Obviously, you can take away from that piece of form. But it stayed on pretty nicely behind Denergamine. And Denergamine is one of the best, if not the best, chaser currently. Um, so, yeah, the step up in trip probably is a good thing. Um, obviously, ran, ran at those, this, uh, this distance over in Cheltenham, I think. And didn't really like it that well. Finished ninth, I think. Yeah, ninth. But obviously this form that's that's happened over these previous three runs has been eye-catching, has been, you know, impressive. And it looks like when, obviously got outpaced by an ergamine, so it looks like the step and trip is going to suit. It will suit with the likes of Warlord, Warlord stepping up and trip, definitely suited him. And I think this trip will definitely suit Fenabale Civila, for sure. The other horse is with the Gary Moore yard, um, Ezra Dejeet. Again, ran in at Cheltenham on heavy ground. Finished pretty pretty nicely at fourth. Six lengths behind Global Citizen in the Grand Daniel. Again, taking that away. There's value in this horse. Massive drifter here. Uh, I'm not too sure what it opened at, but I can see it was from 12s out to 28s. Again, not too sure why this has drifted massively. Obviously, this class step up is going to be a massive thing, and we don't know how good editor Jajit is going to be obviously running in the grand annual was a grade three this is a grade one there's a lot of good horses here but again a lot of these horses like Fakir Didori, like Hitman like St Calvados unlike All Mankind are all sort of horses that either give you a really good run or they just don't give you a good run and there's definitely value here with editor Jajit the eight-year-old from Gary Moore's yard um, yeah, so the only question is what the, the step up in class will bring. Definitely think there's a chance of this horse. Obviously got a decent enough rating. £10 lower than Fenabe Civila. £11 shorter than obviously Vakidor Dury. Race and post ratings have given this horse a rent mark of 165. So obviously it's got a chance and yeah, it should run well. There's four places with Sky Bet. Not too sure whether the bookies, but Sky seem to do very well with place offerings. And those are the sort of races I target with those places. So Sky are usually the ones I go with. Uh, but 25 to 1 each way on Editor Jajit. And Fenabi Sibla, 7 to 1. I pro probably will go each way on this one. Just in case Fakir de Dury does turn up. But I can't have Fakir de Dury at that, that, those odds. are just way too short for me. So yeah, those are the two in the feature race. Moving on to the next race of so the 405. And this is the Topham Handicap Chase. Um, grade three. There's three horses here alike. I definitely think we're going to be on to a winner with one of these three. I'm very, very confident in all these. Bit of a market move on Mac Totty is the first horse I'll talk about. Peter Bowen and the son Sean Bowen. So yeah, definitely think there's um, a lot of things to like about this horse. The eye-catching piece of form, obviously, is the Grand Sefton Handicap Chase. Obviously, that's the major pot, a bit of form that I like about this horse of Mac Totty. Um, stepped up in trip over three miles, doesn't suit, up to three mile four, pulled up. Obviously, these um, distances aren't Mac Totty's ideal distance. Ran over Aintree, good to soft ground, um, obviously in the Grand Sefton, and won um, by one length over a senior citizen. So, I mean, there's that piece of form right there, course and distance form. Um, again, it has run over three miles and run pretty poorly. Definitely the step down and trip is going to definitely suit. Well in with the weights. Currently off a mark of 135. Uh, 10 stone. Yeah, massively handicapped for this race. And I can understand why there's been a bit of a move for this horse for sure. So that'll be my main confidence tip. I probably will back this straight to win. At 8 to 1, Mac Totti. Uh, and, and fingers crossed for a good run, hey? 
The next horse to talk about is Fantastic Lady. Again, well handicapped um, off a mark of 137 with James Bowen on board. Um, yeah, like this horse for Nicky Henderson. Uh, ran in a group two behind Pick Dorothy, finishing over only seven lengths behind. Definitely a piece of form there, running in the grade two off a of mark of 137. Managed to get in with the weights. And again, well handicapped. Obviously, can run to a decent mark as well. Um, don't know why. I mean, it, surely it should have had a bit more um, overall rating added to it for that decent run behind Pick Dorothy in a grade two. So, entered in, coming into this race um, off a decent run with a good jockey on board, with a good yard. I can't see why this horse can't run well. Fantastic lady at 11 to 1 with eight places off him with Sky each way. And the last one to talk about is Sizing Potsy. A Group 2 uh, winner, um, always runs in graded, graded races. He's run in Group 1s before. It's even ran behind Nergamine, finishing 10 lengths. So that's a lovely piece of form as well. Again, this horse is obviously slightly higher rated. I say slightly. It's currently rated £20 uh, pounds higher than Mac Totty. So it's going to be a bit of an ask to sort of, you know, run a well off, of, off a good mark of 155. Um, but however, the form reads really, really nicely. Um, nothing really uh, size and potsy could do wrong. One nice last time out, over two miles, back up in trip. Um, in the penultimate run, obviously came sixth, uh, sixth, came second behind Mellon, six lengths behind Mellon, on heavy ground. Obviously heavy ground isn't side in Potsy's preferable um, going. Gonna get good to soft to soft, which is what side in Potsy likes to run on. I expect a big run here. And yeah, this one's got a great chance. Massive value at 18 to one here. Um, I can understand um, why it's, there's been some movement on this horse for sure. I can't tip up Mr. Coffee, the favourite. I do want to back him. Again, the step up in trip previously at Cheltenham at three miles two um, looked pretty good. Back down into trip to his preferable two mile four behind Long Press. Um, obviously, he's going to be his preferred trip. But again, at just 13 to two, just doesn't seem like value to me. Um, I feel like we're going to, it's going to happen. I feel like I'm going to back it on the day and it'll win, but I can't be tipping it up. Um, those are the three horses I'm very, very confident on. Those are the horses I think I've got very, very well in the race and very, very confident to say at least one of those will have a good, good chance going around the bend, coming two out and in the, the last couple of furlongs. So yeah, a lot of horses in this race, 30 horses. If we can get a winner in this, we'll be laughing. I'd be very impressed if we do. It's going to be a hard race to win. But those are the three fancies I do like. Moving on to the penultimate race of the day. Um, three horses here. I'll quickly just breeze over. Um, the main fancy here is Bambridge. Obviously an impressive run again in the uh, Martin Pipe. I think you have to back this. It's good value at 5-2 to two currently. Uh, not more, much more to say really. That thing uh, probably will win. 14 runners currently running in this race. And the only danger, in my opinion, is Janino Bello. Um, a lot of support coming in recently as well, from 10s into 5 to 1, back out to 6s in some places. I think Janino Bello could run a really good race. Um, the thorn behind Blazing Cow's brilliant in three or four runs ago when it's run against him. So, yeah, I think that's pretty good form. I think Blazing Cow could have won the Bartlett. So, becoming, you know, two lengths behind Blazing Cow's pretty impressive. That's the horse I can see beating Banbridge if there were one. And yeah, I mean, those are, the, those are the two I think probably will probably will win if there was between those two. One of the big prices, there are five places on offer here. We're trying to look for each way value. We're trying to gain a bit of profit each way. And again, bold endeavor at 18 to one, 20 to one in some places, maybe even higher. It's going to run a good race. Um, yeah, ran, ran in two miles two last time out. Definitely the step up and trip we were screaming for. Behind Nelson, who's a well handicapped horse. Um, obviously formed behind John Bond with Nelson. Um, the previous run at Weatherby at one by 12 lengths, bold endeavour. So definitely um, has backed up that form for sure. It's got some nice point to point form. I say nice point to point form. It's only run one race over three miles and one by a good 11 lengths. So there's obviously some point to point form there suggesting that this trip could suit. And there's got to be a reason why 
um, the Yards decided to step this horse up massively and trip to three miles and entered this horse into a grade one. So, I mean, previous run in grade two, yes, came third, but I think got outpaced. So I do understand why the Sepham trip. So hopefully the the trainer knows what he's doing by stepping up the, the trip into three miles. And that's the one I will be thinking of each way value. I definitely think it's got a chance. It's the question of whether the, the trip will suit, which is the major factor. Um, and again, if it if it has that turn of foot coming around the bend, then it definitely got a chance of winning because um, it's got that explosive turn of foot previously with two miles and two mile four form. So I'm expecting a good run. Just the question is, does it stay the extra four furlongs, six furlongs? So I guess we'll have to find out on the day. Coming to the last race, I'm sorry guys for waffling so long, but you know, I've got to explain why um, I like these horses. So another very hard handicap race, 17 runners in this race. I've picked out two horses here, uh, one to just straight win. Uh, currently recording um, this time at seven o'clock, Wizkid has been hammered in. Currently nine to two in some places. You can get them eleven to two. Some um, and William Hill, I'm sure, was eleven to two just before I was recording this. So Whiz Kid at eleven to two. Again, great horse. I think he's got a great chance. Um, absolutely bolted up in the penultimate run, winning by thirty lengths. Um, had some form previously. Um, last time out, some boosted form with Callahan, winning next time out. I mean. Not, not, not that it's a bad thing, but um, Wizkid has run behind Constitution Hill, losing by seventy two lengths. Obviously, that Constitution Hill is a, it's a different beast. It's a different, you know, it's a different horse. But obviously, coming into a class two, it's a bit of a concern whether the the class is going to be there. Um, so yeah, Wizkid at nine to two currently. Um, obviously, eleven to two in some other places if you can get on is definite value and I think Wizkid could run a big race um, well, well handicapped he's got a five pound claimer on board Dr Richard Newland is a good trainer he's in some good um, form as well um, with uh, return to form percentages so yeah do like Wizkid at 92 to just straight win that race and Hacker de Plas, um ran nicely last time out over two miles in a group three finishing 11 lengths behind surprise package well handicapped horse again. Um, Angus is on board. He's taking five pounds off. Oh, voice crack, nice. Taking five pounds off, and he knows the horse really well. He runs on this horse all the time, so he knows what to do. Some decent form behind Bally Breeze. Prefers maybe soft, more heavy grounds. So if there is rain to come, this horse should run a bit better. Hasn't seemed to run on good, good to soft really. Um, so if it does sort of dry out, uh, if the weather does sort of stop raining and um which i'm hoping to um that would be a bit of a worry and i would expect hackers of plus to drift but again it's all just watching out what's going on and six places on offer here again again with sky and i think hacker the plus could run a good race it definitely has a chance coming around the bend the soft ground will suit and hopefully angus will angle them out and not fall over Jumps really well as well. I would like to say Chris quickly before I go. Jumps really nicely, pings the fences, and obviously surprise package is um, has been boosted a bit by, by the form as well. So I like that horse each way, eleven to one each play. So those are the selections. Uh, sorry again for talking for so long, um, but you know. I sort of waffle with these selections, I explain my points and I like to listen to what you guys say in the comments be sections below as well. I really do appreciate it. Really do like the feedback um, and hopefully we can get a big, big winner. Uh, I'll be screaming home during the, during tomorrow. Really looking forward to going to uh, Aintree, my big first ever grade one meeting, getting to see some class horses, getting to see John Bond. I cannot wait and I cannot wait to go screaming over to the bookies claiming my winnings so yeah thanks guys for watching i'll be putting up a i don't know when i'll be putting up my next video it will be in the evening for sure i'm just going to try to think when i'm going to do it but yeah it should be out during the evening um around about seven ish again maybe maybe an eight ish but it should be in the evening for sure so yeah stay tuned hopefully I have a good day tomorrow 
hopefully better than yesterday or today, I should say. And fingers crossed we don't have any horses getting hampered again because that seems to keep happening over and over again. All right, guys, see you later. Stay tuned for tomorrow. And I can't wait to be screaming some winners home. Let's go. Mm -hmm.